talk about the 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 flippant Talladega. Now, what do you remember from all that? Yeah, that uh, I had two ba- I had two wrecks in my life, in my 25 years that left a mark, and left scar tissue. It was Talladega and Texas a year later. So Talladega and the 41 car. Yes, yeah. and it wasn't as bad as Texas. Uh, but it looked much worse. Yeah. Right. Sure. Took down the took down a lot of the fence. Took I down a lot of fence. So 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 I contributed to Talladega in some way, right? Uh, yeah. I I had uh, I had gotten off to a great start and battled for wins in my second year. I battled for a win at Rockingham against uh, your dad and Dale Jarrett. Uh, a couple weeks later, Bobby Labonte, Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, and I battled the last 80 laps at Darlington for the win. And uh, and then won won the poll at Martinsville. The th- th- things are just things are maybe going a little better than they should have. And uh, went to Talladega and and broke my back. I woke up on the apron of the racetrack, and I had uh, Steve Peterson, who was in charge of of uh, safety. Do you remember yep. that name? Steve Peterson's standing on the hood with his one knee on the hood, and they're cutting the roof off. Now I woke up to that. <laughs> Wow. And I'm and I'm and I'm vomiting because uh, I was knocked unconscious. So I'm vomiting, and Steve says, "Are you okay?" And I said, uh, "No, I got something in my back." And so he says, "We're going to get you out and just try to relax, deep breaths." And I was having a hard time catching my breath. It took me a long time to respond to him because I had all the wind knocked out of me. Mm-hmm. Now, if you ever played football, you understand that, right? I didn't. I'd never had the wind knocked out of me like this. Mm. Like, uh, I did not have collapsed lungs, but I must have knocked all the air out of them. I couldn't breathe. And uh, so it took a while to, to fill my lungs. And, and uh, 15 minutes later, they're ready to extract me from the car. And he says, Ricky, nothing came through the seat. And I said, yes, something's in my back. And, um, and later, after all the uh, MRIs and, and CAT scans, I had fractured T3, T4 in my back. And, and it and – it, it really kind of derailed the rest of my season. The fracture in your back was from the car hitting the ground without the suspension. That's exactly right. right it just there. lands on the roll cage. That's exactly right. It could have been, it could have been considerably worse. If you if you if you look at the sequence of that wreck, my arms hanging out the window. Right. I've got asphalt in my elbow. Okay? In it. In it. Yeah. So at one point, my my arm actually hit the, the asphalt. Ground. The elbow did. Oh my gosh. Jeez. And. Uh, and I and I come away from that with uh, two compression fractures of T three T four concussion, and um, how would you grade the concussion? I th- I think that we uh, we drivers have more concussions than we acknowledge, and I think that the concussions are predicated on w- what your history is. Mm-hmm. In other words, you could have a concussion uh, from a, from a very small impact. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, there are other drivers who could have a 50 G impact and just get up and get in the backup car, yeah. right? And and ultimately, I think that's part of the story with me in 1997 is I had three weeks in a row where I had impacts. Bam, bam, bam. And the last one, uh, I woke up in the helicopter. You know, I woke up in the helicopter, which, or at least, um, that was my first memory, and. Um, I didn't get diagnosed with a concussion till 2012, and I probably had, a, you know, I don't know how many concussions before then because we didn't know what we didn't talk, you know, we didn't we didn't go get diagnosed right for concussions. I had wreck in '98, flipped the car at Daytona in '98, and and my helmet hit the the door top, and um, <clears throat> it came down on the left front. And my head went and hit the door. It's crazy how hard we move. worked to move our seats <clears throat> to the left, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. I got I, I go <laughs> into the infield. I get out, I feel fine. I don't I don't feel dizzy. I don't feel anything. I feel fine. I go in through the infield care center, get checked out. I I'm everything I'm disappointed. And then I'm standing there doing an interview right outside the infield care center and I I got real dizzy. Right. Ah, uh, just a little bit woozy. Got banged around in there just a little bit. Remember what happened? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it just flipped over. Can't really tell what's going on from inside the race car. All you see is grass, sky, grass, sky. But and uh, almost fainted. 
And so at the moment, in the moment, I'm like, laugh that off. Yeah, yeah. Like, Shake it off. Rung my bell. Boy, I'm, you know, I'm a big time racer now. Um, a big part of that would be the culture yeah. that we grew up in. But uh, yeah. we didn't think, I never in a million years at that moment thought, man, I'm in danger. Or I got to be careful yeah. with this, right? I have an injury. No. I just thought, oh, I hit my head, no problem. I'll be good as new in a couple of days. And, uh, and so there were probably a lot of times when I had a concussion of some degree and didn't even check that box, didn't even record it mentally, right? right or didn't even think, oh, I have a concussion. You know, you just went on about your way. Now, uh, I had a big enough one in 2012 that it was you couldn't ignore yeah. it. That's the moment when I started going, I better, I'm, I'm going to pay more attention. Mm -hmm. um, so, <clears throat> and then now, you know, from that moment, I could tell you exactly how many I've had. But before then, I don't know. But uh, I asked, you know, how you would grade that concussion, and you say, uh, you know, and, and we'll, we can get into this in a bit, but um, had you had any experience before that? I guess with head injuries or any kind of a you know I don't, we've all raced yeah we've all hit things we all we all, so we've all had concussions yeah and it's just and it's really probably the greatest parallel would be a, a football player I mean, it's a contact sport and I I can think back to 1982 my first year going off the track and hitting something and you know sort of having I call it the anesthesia effect you know where if you ever ever had surgery. Uh, you know, sort of the most puzzling part of surgery is when you're given the anesthesia, but when you wake up from it, yeah. mm -hmm. right? A lot of times you hear sounds before you actually comprehend where you are. And I would equate the, all the concussions I've had to being similar to waking up from anesthesia. Yeah. You, uh, when you reflect on it, you, you, you heard noises, you hear things like, like, hearing the helicopter the prop on the helicopter after texas and yeah. that uh that sticks with me I, that that sound and uh so i never measured there were aspects of racing that i never measured okay one being risk ever and when you get hurt it changes things dramatically yeah really hurt like what so talladega i went back i I came back from that injury, and I challenged for the win. A few weeks later, I was battling Ernie Irvin at uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Coca-Cola 600. I just swapped the lead a number of times, and uh, and I was I felt really on my game. And um, but then I would be hit or miss, hit or miss all through that year. And but it wasn't until I uh, I went back. That was after Texas. But it wasn't until I went back to Talladega after the Talladega wreck that you thought about it differently. no i had like a damn panic attack in right. the car yeah like i i got in the car uh lined up ready to go hadn't even thought about what it was going to be like i get out on the racetrack at 200 miles an hour in practice cars lined up uh three wide in front you know for four rows three wide behind for four or five rows and a car to my left and my right and i'm going down the back stretch and I just had this sort of flashback, like, I don't remember how I got hurt. Like, I didn't do anything at Talladega to break my back. I just was a victim of cir yeah, the, you the Talladega circumstances. Yeah. Like, we all play in that same sandbox. So when I, I was out there in the middle of practice, I couldn't get out. I couldn't mm. lift. I had all these cars behind me. I couldn't go to the left. I couldn't go to the right. And, man, I really struggled. I came in, and I didn't even put the window net down, didn't take my helmet off, and and um, there's a lot of those types of things that we don't ever, we never expose that. No. Until we retire. Yeah. Because we're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote about that in my book. So I had almost the exact same experience. Mm -hmm. um, the 2012 uh, injury came from a, a crash at Talladega. Okay. <clears throat> there was a big wreck and a test. And then four weeks later, I crashed at Dega and... And uh, all the gain, all the gains I had made, made yes. it was my head came, we were gone. And the, the 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 first one was a blown tire at Kansas, yeah. right? And so uh, I, yeah. and when I went back to Talladega the next year, uh, they were three wide, 
you know, 10, 12, 15 laps to go, they're all three wide. I'm You're like, in the race. Yeah. I'm like, oh, they're wow. going to wreck. They're wow. going to wreck. And I backed off to like a 20, 10, 15, 20 car length. I'm by myself, like 10 car lengths, 20 car lengths behind this pack <laughs> of like 15 cars. Yeah. And I'm like, they're going to wreck. They're going to wreck. Late in the race, And too. The, they didn't wreck. And they didn't. I've never heard that I story. Rolled, yeah, I I'd rolled ne- across the finish line, and I thought to myself, what the hell did I just do? Yeah. I have really f- screwed this over. Yeah. You know, and there's no, there's, what can you say? I got out of the car, yeah. and I went to Steve and the guys, and I was like, damn, I thought they were going to wreck. I'm going to tell you a real quick story as it relates to that, right? Because <clears throat> going back to the insecurity of being a driver, like, when you had to get out of your car, I know how you felt because every driver who's at the highest level of motorsports has equity in their whole career. They have equity in that car. They have equity in all the people that work on that car. They take them to lunch, give them bonuses, whatever it takes, the team part of it, right? Mm-hmm. And seeing somebody else in your car mm. is brutal. Mm. It's brutal. So you'll do whatever you have to to masquerade your way through it until you feel better and you think it's only going to be a few days. Yeah. Maybe be a few weeks. Something that was really, I just thought of it right now as we're talking, but when when I got hurt uh, in Texas, it was really bad. It was worse than I even realized. And, and the ramifications were years, not months, certainly not weeks. So... I'm stumbling around after this race in Atlanta, literally stumbling around. And, and a close friend who was a team manager I had hired for my own businesses, Rick Blackburn, one day I, I kind of ran into the wall in the office. And he goes, you all right? And it it pissed me off. you know. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm all right. But I wasn't. I wasn't all right. Yeah. And that was right. At, that was the Monday after Atlanta where, you know, long story, we don't have enough time, but it led me to – uh, Dr. Petty and Dr. Petty sent me to UNC and and so all of a sudden I lost complete control. Doctor said uh, they blew air in my left ear and and they put this machine on my uh, head that measures rapid eye movement and nothing's going on. They do the right ear, which was the side of the impact at Texas, and I start vomiting and I just fall over and it, and they said you've been driving a race car? And I said, yeah. And they said, you're not driving a race car. Like, you're not driving home. And the first person I called was Rick Hendrick. And and I said, how are we going to go about this? And he said, well, let's, you know, talk to John. And and then, like, the, we made an announcement. And the next day, one of the first calls I got was from Ty Norris. Okay. Now, he may or may not remember, but he, he calls and said, hey, uh, Dale uh, wants you to come drive the one car because Steve had gotten hurt, you remember? Uh, I think in Atlanta. Uh, Dale wants you to come drive the one car. And I said, Ty, I can't drive anything. I bring this up because that was the mentality back in 1997. Mm-hmm. Nobody got hurt, and if you did, you didn't talk about it. So I, I'm diagnosed with post-concussion syndrome, and I and – and I tell the, I have to deal with it because it's out of my hands now. When I went to UNC, I exposed myself. Now there's no way back. And, but the world wasn't ready to hear that a driver can't drive because he's got post-concussion syndrome. That's only a, a, a hockey thing, an NFL thing. And it, uh, you know, there's three times in my life that I experienced acute depression one of which you're aware of because you helped me with it. The second, first time my mom was, uh, I was just very young. My, we nearly lost my mom. And I didn't know I had depression, but uh, it, it had uh, a terrible effect. And the second time was in that period where I'd worked my whole life to be a cup winner. And I'm going to win a cup race. I mean, it's, I'm this close and it's gone. Hey, if you haven't listened to the entire podcast with Ricky Craven, I think it's one you're really going to want to listen to because Ricky really dives deep into some of the more difficult situations he found himself in during his career. Click the link to listen.